This is Minecraft Bedrock, a game played by many people, but yet there aren't even that many 100 days videos made about it. My name is Basic King, and this is the story about how I survived 100 days in Minecraft Bedrock. If you like what you see, consider subscribing because I'm very close to 5k. With that said, let's get straight to day one. As the first day began, I looked around and wow. I spawned right next to a village. I must be really li- uh, never mind. I guess I am playing Minecraft Bedrock after all. Notch must have felt bad for me or something because I found some iron armor in a chest along with an iron pickaxe. And then right after that I found another blacksmith and this time he had some obsidian and a saddle for me. Thank you Notch. Once I was done roleplaying as a pillager, I decided to start chopping down my first tree as well as start mining for some cobblestone. I then crafted up some stone tools and decided to go exploring, and that's when I found this ruined nether portal, which just so happened to have a god apple. Now I don't know what the chances are, and I get that this is bedrock, but holy crap, this is a big moment that needs to be celebrated. And then right after that, I got a trident after killing a drowned. Bedrock, I love you. And then I went home to sleep for day two. After waking up on day two, I was immediately jump scared. Yeah, this skeleton might have scared me, but I still took him out. I then decided to pull a Joe Biden and forget how to walk. I fell right into a hole and could have died, but luckily, it was right next to a cave entrance. So I began bridging down and, well, I might have fallen directly on a skeleton and could have died again. But it's all good because I rode this wave all the way down and managed to find not one, but not two either, but three whole veins of diamonds. After deciding I was rich enough, I went back up and decided to sleep for day three. Day three, I focused on getting organized as well as crafting up a few furnaces and getting some iron smelted up because I wanted to be Iron Man. Then I began collecting some wheat because I had an upcoming project that I knew would take quite a while, so I needed to prepare. I also kindly asked the villagers if I could borrow their potatoes. Don't worry, I didn't steal. While I was waiting for my potatoes to cook, I saw this in the distance, so I went to check it out. Unfortunately, I couldn't become allies with the pillagers because this village had nothing to really steal. Day four, I betrayed my men. Look, I'm sorry guys, it's nothing personal, but come on, you gotta get better loot than that. While running back to my village, I found an abandoned nether portal, and that's when I noticed something. I was being followed, and I really did not want bad omen, so I'm sorry dude, but you're turning into McDonald's Sprite. I just can't deal with this right now. Once I made it back home, I decided to make a chest. I figured if I'm gonna be looting all these different places, I'm gonna want some inventory space to hold the items. After cooking up some more potatoes, I decided to call it for the day. Day five, I began my first big project in this 100 days movie, and that was a villager trading hall. After running across this hill, I began digging. And uh, well, let's just say I should have crafted a couple more shovels because there was so much dirt that needed to be mined out. But eventually I got it done and it looked like this. I started off day six by crafting up some boats. Using these boats, I was going to transport villagers from over here to my villager farm. But just like every 13 year old teenager, there was a problem with that. And that problem was this hill. I needed to get a villager from down there in the water to up here, but I knew this was going to be tricky. But then I thought of a big brain idea. What if I made a water slide? Honestly, this didn't even take that long and it actually ended up working really well. Using this water slide, I was able to get my first and second villager in here with no problem. Once everything was ready, I decided to craft up some bread and well, let them go to their business. Day seven, I started off with chopping down some trees. I then lured these two paid workers to my base and trapped them in a hole. Within the span of about five minutes, there's already five children being born from these villagers. You know what? I'm not gonna question it. I then went on a bit of a killing spree, killing dozens and dozens of cows. I'm just kidding, I could only find a couple. But that is when I found this guy. I went ahead and asked people on my Discord server, that you should totally join by the way, to give me a name suggestion, and they decided Oreo. So I'd like you to meet my new horse, Oreo. Together, I went through the night killing mob after mob, getting tons of bones and a bunch of other useful things I could use. So, thank you, Oreo. Day 8, I started off by planting some sugarcane. Today, I wanted to primarily focus on getting lecterns and other things for villagers, so I could get myself a trading hall set up. But before I got started on that, I was getting really sick of making the journey to get back to my stuff, so I brought it back to my base. I was starting to get more and more attached to these villagers, which I was soon going to regret. 
Foreshadowing aside, I noticed I was bone dry on iron, so I decided to craft up some torches and a diamond pick, and then I headed into the caves. I had a couple close calls, but I did manage to get a ton of iron in the end, along with a ton of coal, and then I spent most of the night time just standing still waiting for it all to smelt up. Day 9 I started off by crafting myself up a shield and some other basic tools. Today I wanted to primarily focus on mining out my villager trading hall, and I knew this was going to take a minute. Now that I had everything all mined out, it was time for the fun part, and that is of course getting the villagers down here with the correct professions. Or at least that's what I would say if I actually had the professions. I didn't quite steal them yet, so I guess it was time to go up to the surface. Once I got up there, I started robbing this village for everything it had. I also almost died but eventually I made it back and everything was fine. Day 10, I mostly spent shearing sheep because I needed a lot more wool and a lot more beds. So I returned home after getting a ton of wool and yep, these guys can just keep doing their business. Day 10 is when I started the most monumental part of this 100 days, and that is the villager trading hall. There was four things I did. First, I get these villagers lured out, then I trap them in a hole and kind of push them down. Then I trap them in a wall, make sure to lock their trades though, because I don't want them, you know, gaining freedom. But this definitely did take a few days, so let's look at me while I was recording. Okay, hello, this is the first time I'm actually speaking in game for this video. So I just want to quickly show off what I've been working on, because I know I did skip quite a few days doing this. So I have a bunch of my money makers on this side, and I also have a spot where I can buy some food. Figured that'd be pretty useful. Uh, I have a farmer, probably should get more of those. Two blacksmith people, this guy has a cool sword. But what I spent all that time on was these guys. Believe it or not, mending sharpness 4. This guy also took 100 tries, got efficiency 5. Protection 4, front breaking 3. I'm quite happy with the progress, now let's dive back into the 100 days. Day 13, I was feeling kind of like Mr. Beast. I was just breaking down some trees, but putting saplings down to replace them. And apparently, I was feeling a tiny bit political, and I made a bunch of walls. I ended up crafting over three stacks of walls and a stack of torches, but for a good reason. I wasn't wasting it, don't worry. Hard earned cobblestone. I wanted to spend the next few days touching up my land. I wanted to call this the great building season or something like that, but the name's still in progress and we, we can just move on. We don't need to talk about that. I spent the next few days touching up my land, uh, making things a little more flat, a little more even, and just nicer overall, so I made a couple more shovels, and yeah, I began doing this for quite a while. But after a while, it started looking pretty flat and nice, so I decided, hey, this would be a great time to start looking at the rain and trying to move around. But then God was like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, and he tried striking me down. I did not appreciate this one bit, because I was literally three blocks away from being struck. But hey, it's fine, you know, I'll move on, I'm a human being. So, God problems aside, I started placing down a bunch of walls and walling in my land. About halfway through the night, I decided I needed to place some torches because mobs kept spawning and I really didn't want some more creeper holes to fix up. Everything was going really well until this happened. I heard a creeper and I had about two seconds to react. If I didn't, then this hundred days would probably be over right now. But by the end of the night, I had finished walling off my area and making it all spawn-proofed. Day 14, I learned that if you destroy the source blocks of sugarcane, it just deletes the sugarcane itself. I did not know this was a thing, but hey, I guess now I know. After ruining some fun that kids could potentially have from the water slide, I decided it was time to install a gate into my compound. I don't know how, but I forgot to do this. And then I spent the remainder of the day just chopping down trees, preparing for the house that I was going to build. The whole morning of day 15, I spent chopping down this giant tree. I definitely did not want to leave any part of this floating. It was around this time where I really started to think about what exactly I wanted to build at my compound. I had no real ideas for a base, but then I got one. So I crafted up a stack of torches and started running back to the cave from the start of this 100 days. What I wanted to do was head down to negative 57 and begin doing a lot of strip mining because I needed some deep slate. While making my way back up to the surface, I stumbled across a fight. 
and I decided not to get involved. The loot definitely could have been better, but once I made it back home, I decided that day 18, I wanted to focus on finally starting working on my base, and oh boy, was this going to take a couple days. As proof, today, literally, I spent the whole day just making these four pillars. Not the most amount of progress, I know, and I apologize, but I began working through the night and managed to make a decent amount of progress. Day 19, I started off by collecting a ton of sand because I needed a ton of glass panes for the house that I had in mind. After making an entrance up to my base using some ladders, I began placing down all of my glass panes. Once I finished with that, I decided to go back into my little hobbit hole and sort my inventory and then go to bed. Day 20, I crafted up a bunch of different stairs, and then I began by finishing my roof. After finishing the roof, I put the final glass panes in, and yeah, I'll be the first to admit my house definitely looks a little strange and almost like a creature. But feel free to leave your comments down below and I'll read them. Day 21, I mainly focused on these paths. They look really nice. Come on, give me a compliment, please. And then I crafted up a hoe and yeah, I started work on this giant farm and it was one of the most satisfying things of my life. Oh, just listen to the sounds. The beautiful glory of me tilling the land. It's so satisfying and I could watch it all day. My farming obsession aside, I realized I still had a little bit of sugarcane, so I decided now would be a smart idea to start planting it before I forget. So I planted it right next to my gate and then I went to bed for day 22. For some reason, day 22, I was really feeling the lag, so I decided to look through my settings and that's when I noticed for some reason, my render distance was all the way up. I know I didn't do this, but for some reason it is, and it's causing me immense amount of lag. So I turned that down, and then I began chopping down trees and planting a ton of saplings. Once I was done with that, I grabbed some wheat and started breeding up my cows. I've been doing this periodically through the last few days, and they're really starting to grow in numbers. And then to end off the day, I decided to craft myself up an enchantment table. I was really happy to do this, but I won't be using it for quite a bit, because I still have a few things I have to get ready. Day 23, I left my compound and searched for the perfect cave. I really wanted to get some diamond armor, but unfortunately, this cave was mainly just a big waste of time. I didn't find much. But eventually, I found a bigger cave, and it actually went down to Deep Slate. And that's where I managed to find my first diamond. I was so happy, because it didn't take too long to get. But then, unfortunately, I started spiraling out of control. And, yeah, I spent so much time in this cave... Literally got jump scared multiple times, almost died to a creeper, almost fell in lava and died, but I managed to find a couple more diamond veins, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Oh, my bad, I forgot to mention that I got another enchanted golden apple. Yeah, I love bedrock, I'm feeling really rich. After gathering up a little bit more of obsidian, I decided to return back to my base, and then I made a double chest and put all of my valuable stuff in there, and yeah. I'm really trying to rub it in your face that I am the richest bedrock player and you just kind of have to deal with it. Ignoring the fact that it's midnight, I started breaking down all my sugarcane because I was really trying to save up for some paper and books. And then I also collected up some wheat. Day 27, I decided to grab up all of my bones and turn them into bone meal. I thought today would be a perfect day to do a lot more farming, so I went out, bone mealed all of my crops, and managed to double the size of my farm. And then I decided to use my wheat to start breeding up some cows, but then God decided that he hates me, and he made it rain. Again. You know, it's rained so many times in this 100 Days movie that at this point, I'm starting to think that I'm just partly cursed. But it's okay, I'll move on. I then started chopping down a bunch of trees and again, replacing all of my saplings. And this time, instead of doing some weird build or something with the wood, I decided to turn it all into sticks and see how many emeralds I could get. And then once I got all of these emeralds, I decided to be cool if I started leveling up my other villagers. But then I ended up actually wasting all of my emeralds trying to get this guy to trade me some uh, diamond armor. Yeah, that's... It, it's gonna take a lot more trading to do that. Instead of sleeping, I decided I wanted to kill some skeletons, but the zombie was like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. So instead I went home, grabbed some obsidian, and then I ran around for a little bit trying to figure out where I wanted to put my portal, but eventually I decided on my house. So now I have this portal right next to where I want to be sleeping. Uh, I won't question that at all, that's pretty normal behavior. And then I decided, hey, 
Why don't I go to the nether? I'm just kidding. I know I'm not ready for that. I mean, literally look at my armor. It's on the verge of breaking. I needed to get geared up before I did anything like that because I was not going to risk dying in this hundred days. But how exactly am I going to get the diamonds to do this? Caving. Yeah, that's... That's really all it is. But this time it's a little different, and see, instead of searching for a cave, I decided why don't I just make my own. After a couple minutes in finishing this up, I'm done with it, and I think it's a nice little mine hut. But then I decided to spend the rest of the day just tunneling down to 12. I wanted to go down to 12 for a little bit of an experiment to see what the best diamond level is. But once I got to 12, uh, yeah, things got a little interesting and I started tunneling out, you know, starting to do a little bit of strip mining. And that's when I found the biggest cave of my life. This thing was ginormous. Now you would think with a cave this big that diamonds would be a pretty quick and obvious thing to see and find. Well, in that case, you're wrong. I drove myself mad in this cave. I found a couple diamond veins, yes, but they were one diamond a piece. Now, that's not too bad, right? Wrong. It, I was literally down here for like an hour straight, and I kept finding these one veins, and it was driving me nuts. And at one point, I was backed in a corner with a, like a zombie spider jockey. I don't even know what you want to call it. And I almost died. The skeleton shot it behind me, and I went down to almost half a heart. So I ran away, ate a god apple, and yeah, I just barely managed to survive. Luckily, after that, I didn't have any more near-death experiences, but I still kept finding these one veins of diamonds, and it was really demotivating. But that is until I found the secret water strat. Bedrock has one great feature that I really like, and that is its water. Its water is amazing in caves because it's like... It's almost like free x-ray, like you can see everything around you when you go underwater. So using this method, I got myself a ton of different diamonds and eventually I had enough for armor. So once I got all that, I decided to head back up to the surface. And yeah, here's a great example of how far I had to dig down to get down here. Day 33, I was almost happy to see the rain, but then again, I really dislike it. It's always raining in this world, I don't know why. And after the exhausting work over the last 10 days, I was finally able to craft myself a full diamond armor set along with a couple tools. I felt so rich, and you can definitely see when I go in third person right here. Flexing like your ex aside, I decided to head back up to the surface and tend to my farms and my animals. After hearing the screech of a couple phantoms, it occurred to me that I haven't slept in quite a while, so I should probably do that. Day 34, I decided that I was kind of sick of running out of food here and there, and I wanted to go back to just eating potatoes again. So I bone wheeled potatoes quite a few times and planted a couple so I didn't like lose them all, and then I began smelting them up. Next, I kind of realized that this forest is looking a little overgrown, so unlike Mr. Beast, I decided to say hello and chop down all the trees. After a full day's worth of chopping down trees and two iron axes, I'm proud to say that I successfully chopped down the whole forest, and yes, I'm starting to get a ton of beehives, but that's for later in this 100 days. Day 35, I started off by, well, yeah, ruining all of my hard work. All of these sticks and trees that I chopped down were going directly towards the villagers. I really needed emeralds for books, but yeah, I'm a little bummed because I had like seven stacks of wood, but it's okay. You know, at least I'm becoming rich off of it. After crafting up some books, I was very pleased because now I could finally buy some of my first enchants, and that is a full prop four set. Yay, thank you capitalism. Seeing how much fun I had the last day with capitalism, I decided, hey, why don't I get some more sticks and go trade them? Wait a minute. Why are you costing a stack now? Wait, are you two? Why? Oh, you're not stopping my capitalism. Unfortunately, I couldn't really do anything to fix this, so for now, I guess my capitalism's gonna be slowed down. But don't worry, I'm going to the nether soon, and these guys will feel my fist when they decide they don't want to give me any more profits. I won't allow it. Oh yeah, I also managed to buy my first mending book, so that's pretty cool. Problems with my business partners aside, I began collecting some more sugarcane because I really wanted to make sure I had enough books to get a full level enchantment table. Speaking of my enchantment table, I still didn't really have a proper place to put this, nor have I really thought of the building I want to put it in. So I decided why don't I spend the next day or two just building a little spot, making it look nice. 
And that's exactly what I did. After running around for a little bit, I decided the end of this path would be the perfect spot to make this little enchantment setup. So I began working and managed to finish it all by the end of the night. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but I don't know if there's going to be enough rooms for bookshelves to make it so it's level 30. So I might have to do a little bit of messing around with that. But let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. Day 37, I started off by seeing if I can make a weakness potion, and I found out that I actually have all the ingredients already. I'm just missing blaze powder. Isn't that fun? And then I decided I needed to chop down a couple more trees and place down a few more saplings so I can never have too much wood. And that's when I made a questionable purchase. I wanted to get some gunpowder, bones, and all that good stuff, so I bought about a stack of arrows. Trust me, I know what I'm doing, and I'm good with cash. I was about to head out when I realized I forgot someone, and that is my good old buddy old pal, Oreo. I'm sorry Oreo, I definitely did- oh god, you're gonna die, okay, you're going back. After spending the night roleplaying as a navy seal sniper, I realized that I had a ton of bows, so I decided to craft them all into one, and now I have a fixed up bow. Day 38, I made myself an anvil and decided to place it into my house. I was really starting to get geared up, or at least trying to, so it was back to farming. I ended up getting so many seeds that I filled up my entire farm and now I had extras, so I guess that's a first. I then spent the rest of the day chopping down more trees. I'm sorry, it's gonna get really repetitive here for the next few days. I can't really help it, I'm just trying to get some emeralds. Day 39, I decided to sell all of my beautiful sticks for emeralds, and I actually managed to get myself a lot of mending books, which was going to be helpful for the future. I then crafted up as many bookshelves as I could because I really wanted to see if I could get level 30 enchants on my enchantment table, and I actually managed to get to level 27, which I was a little surprised with. Now that I knew it was possible, I went home, crafted up a couple more bookshelves, and then I placed them down. I then decided that I wanted to enchant my pickaxe, and under any other circumstances, I would have definitely kept this, but I was really looking for fortune, so I'm putting it in the grindstone. Alright, second try is the charm, and oh, nope, just efficiency three. Okay, for real this time, third try is the charm, and wow, yep, it looked like it was, so that's pretty nice, now I have pretty much a maxed out pickaxe. It was still raining day 40, but I don't care. It's still prime time to chop down some trees. I mean, at this point, you should have it memorized. I chopped trees, went home, got profits. Yeah, it's, that's really all it is. But you can't really argue with this amount of emeralds. Your boy's rolling with over a stack. Day 41, I was out bone mealing some crops, and then I fed up some cows, because I killed a lot of them while trying to get my bookshelves, but, uh, we'll ignore that. I didn't kill anything. I then bought a couple more mending books, and now I only need two more, which is pretty good. But now I really want a good sword, and uh, unbreaking just isn't really gonna cut it, so to the grindstone. Unfortunately, now I don't have 30 levels, so I can't really do a full enchant, but what I can do is plant some more trees and chop down a few more trees. Let's go, I love capitalism. Day 42, I decided that I was sick of doing the same thing day after day, so I started building a new building, and this was going to be... Originally, it was supposed to be like a wind tower, but I decided that I don't really know how to build that, so, uh, yeah, I just kind of started free building this, but it didn't turn out too bad. Day 43, I decided that I needed to put a roof on this thing, and when I came back out, I decided that I actually hate how it looks right now, so it's time to completely switch it up, and by the end of the day, this is what we were working with. Day 44 was my final day working on this house, and I'm very proud of how it turned out. I think it adds a lot and definitely makes my compound look a little more complete. Although sadly, I had to use the rest of my deep slate for this roof, which kind of sucks because I really don't feel like mining for it anymore. Day 45 started off with some wonderful capitalism, don't worry, I'd try not to skip a day even if I could. I then made myself three axes and, uh, well I think you know the drill. Although this night, instead of sleeping after I was done chopping trees, I decided to feed a bunch of cows, and I was really trying to get these numbers up because once again I had to kill a few of them. Day 46, I made myself two hoes and grabbed some water from my water bucket. Today, I had a cool idea, and that's to completely fill the outside of this building with farmland. Once this all grows in, I feel like it's gonna look really nice. I then spent the night chopping down a bunch more trees because that's all I ever do with my life. 
Oh, don't worry, I also did this for the majority of the morning of day 47. After all that hard work, it was finally time for some capitalism. Thank you, I'll take those. Oh, thank you for that, Emerald. Oh, thank you for these too. Man, everyone's just so nice. I decided to stay up that night because I was really wanting to get some good enchants on my sword, and I still wasn't quite level 30, so, uh, goodbye, creeper. Alright, finally, after all this time, let's- let's get this sword enchanted. Okay, okay. And- oh. Un- unbreaking three- okay, you know what, it's fine. I'll put some sharpness on it, put some mending on it, and we'll just call it good for now. All jokes aside, this was my first time using a mending book, and my pickaxe got some mending as well, so that's pretty monumental. I decided to name my sword the King's Blade, and my pickaxe, I called it the Earth Splitter, because, I don't know, it just seemed fitting. Day 48, I decided to enchant just my chest plate and my helmet. I wanted to get some, just a little bit of protection, because I didn't feel entirely safe, and I really wanted to go to the nether. Yeah, you heard that right. I went home, I gathered all of my supplies, and then I stepped through the nether portal. And immediately caught on fire, and literally, like, died IRL. I have, I have no idea why I caught on fire, there's literally nothing here. But, you know what? I'll accept it. As far as being in the nether goes, I was only here for a couple things. The most obvious was blaze rods because I really need to make those weakness potions. Second thing I really wanted was some glowstone because, I mean, it's just a nice building block. And the third thing I wanted was a little bit of gold and quartz. These both give XP and it's really cool for me because, you know, I'm trying to level up, trying to get some levels. But, uh, yeah, I ended up looking around for four days I was in the nether, okay? Four entire days, no idea where to go. I could not find the stupid fortress anywhere, and it was really, really starting to annoy me, to the point where I started getting a little reckless. Now, when you hear reckless in a 100 days movie, what do you think? Do you think, oh, I'm just running around being stupid and risking my life, or do you think I'm running around being stupid risking my life? Well, the answer goes as following. I ran around acting stupid and not caring, not having a single care in the world. And, uh, well, we'll just kind of let, we'll just kind of let this small little short clip explain itself. Okay, now I'm at a loss for words. I just spent the last month of my life working to get to this point for this video. And I just singly handedly lost my clickbait for I survived a hundred days in Minecraft Bedrock. So I'm sorry, you've been misclicked, you've been clickbaited, wh whatever you want to call it. I'm still gonna title this video like that, but uh, okay, picture this, alright? So, one death is technically closer to zero if you're rounding, so technically I have yet to die. So I'm just gonna quickly go get my stuff and uh, yeah, at this point, I was really mad, so I just kind of logged off for the night. Day 53, I mostly spent just getting everything organized, and wow, I'm starting to get a ton of gunpowder. Oh yeah, and just in case you want a little bit of a backstory about how I died, uh, I literally just was walking around in another tunnel, and a magma spawned on top of me. Probably could've ate a golden apple, but I didn't, so uh, we're just gonna continue moving on with our lives. After getting everything completely organized, I got myself a ton of sticks, and then I went to do some trading. I really wanted to get my head off of what had happened the day before, so, uh, yeah. Once I was done trading, I decided that I wanted to leave my compound for a little bit. I wanted to go on a little bit of a caving adventure, mainly because I needed, uh, some, uh, coal. Yeah, I ran out of coal for, like, the fourth time in this 100 days movie so far. But this time it's gonna be different because I have a fortune on my pickaxe. And if I find diamonds, hey, that's just more payment. After just a little bit of running around, I managed to find myself another big wide open cave. I seem to get really lucky with these. And after just a little bit of mining with my fortune, I managed to get a stack of iron. So then I started heading down this giant hole, and uh, we'll just let the next clip speak for itself. Yeah, you remember that time in that last cave where I struggled to find diamonds and kept getting one veins? Well, this made up for it. My fortune was really just like, oh, awesome, bro. I mined four diamonds and managed to get myself eight diamonds. Like, that is awesome. That's a great start. And that's how this whole cave was. I just kept finding these nice little things. Not necessarily a ton of diamonds, but I still managed to get a decent bit. And, of course, a ton of coal. Definitely needed coal and fortune made that very easy. So after all this, I finally went back home and yeah. 
One thing I definitely do have to say is I am extremely proud of this little compound I've made. I have love seeing all this progress I've made and it's only going to go up from here because after this I wanted to primarily focus on building. But first of all, let's look at my wealth. So let's just take a little bit of a second to look around at all the stuff I have. I know it's a lot to unfold, but hold on, give me one minute and I'll go ahead and fix this all up. Ah, there we go. Now you can see all of the blocks of diamonds and everything else I have. Yeah, I'm really wealthy. And yeah, yeah, this was a full day. Alright, that little gap right there, that was a full day. I spent the whole day just cooking up my iron and furnaces and organizing this single chest just so you can see how rich I am. Now, the rest of day 57, I started off by chopping down some more sugarcane because I needed some books. So I had to breed up a couple more cows and then murder a couple cows. I'm sorry guys, it's nothing personal. The cycle of life aside, I decided to grab all of my emeralds and a couple books because I wanted to get all of my mending books. That's right, finally managed to get all of these, which is a huge relief. Learning how to use English aside, I grabbed all of my books and was pretty happy with my collection, definitely starting to grow. But then I decided it was finally time to return to the nether. Although this time, I wasn't going to be in there long, I purely just wanted some more quartz and stuff to get some more levels quickly. But uh, once again, the nether almost killed me. Yeah, I got a little too close to death right here, so let's just return home where everything is nice and happy. Day 58, it should come as no surprise that I'm back to chopping trees. It's really peaceful and it definitely calms my nerves after a nice trip to hell. After finishing my tree chopping, I decided to get a few more emeralds and then finally upgraded my axe. That's right. This is a monumental moment. Finally put enchants on there, so wood chopping is going to be a lot quicker now. After that, I decided to name my axe the Tree Stomper because, well, what else is it going to be used for, let's be honest. And just to max out all of my tools, I decided to put mending on my shovel and call it the Blue Spoon. Now that I have a really decent axe, I wanted to take it for a test drive and oh boy is this thing fast. You know, I might have learned the hard way just how fast it is because I accidentally broke a beehive and uh, just <sighs> look at this angry mob, alright. This makes me feel like a BTS stan on Twitter. Like, I this is scary. By the end of the day, I chopped down almost every tree, so I just planted some saplings and then went to bed. Day 60, I felt like building, but noticed I have no more deep slate for roofs, so I had to travel down to my mines and start mining for deep slate for a bit. I know it's not the most exciting footage, but I came up during midnight on day 61, so I slept and now we're on day 62. With all of this building material, wow, first of all, I look rich, but second of all, I can build like four or five homes easily with this amount. So that's exactly what I did, and this is where I start regretting not having replay mod. You see, Bedrock and Java are two very different games in terms of mechanics and like mods and stuff, which I won't dive into because, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna go through that. But just know that like Optifine and Replay a mod and stuff like that aren't really on Bedrock. So, yeah, I guess I'll speed edit this so it's still interesting, but I'm sorry in advance if this gives you a stroke. It probably won't, but I'll see you in a couple days. I'm sorry if that time lapse is a little in your face and all over the place because I really don't know how to do this without spending hours and hours editing the short little montage. But just know that after this day, I finished this house and this is what it looked like after. Quite proud of it. It's meant to be a pretty boxy basic kind of build. And once I get done with everything else, I want to put a bunch of beds in there and then that could be like almost like a town hall where a bunch of villagers can stay. And I'm also going to be connecting this all up with paths because I think it looks really nice and makes the land feel a little more like connected, I guess. Once I was done with that, I wanted to make a little bit of a different kind of house, but these cows were in the way, so I did the most logical thing, and I made an entire back passageway behind this house just for cows to stay. I hope they enjoy their new home, because it took me quite a few minutes. Once I was done with that, I started working on this house, and again, I'm just going to skip the whole montage part and just show you the after product really wish i had replay mod it would make this a lot easier but just know that i'm going through 
adding details, trying to make everything as nice as I can. It's just a pain to edit. So this is what this house looks like after. And of course, yes, yes, yes. I need to focus on that path. Once I was done, I decided to do a little bit of farming and some wood chopping because I wanted to take a little bit of a break and I needed a little bit more wood for one more house. Day 69, stop laughing, I decided to grab some bone meal and start bone mealing my land and making some more vegetation. I thought it'd be a nice little addition, make everything feel a little more complete, and uh, I might have started World War III by accident, but uh, we'll just ignore the dozens and dozens of bees chasing me right now. You know, I'm sure everything will be fine. Escaping a world war aside, I decided to bone meal a couple trees into my compound. I wanted to make a little bit more greenery, but I had to make sure to place torches because, you know, there's this little thing I like to call mobs, and that's not exactly what I want. But after this, I started working on one of my final homes, and, uh, you know, this one might take a little bit of work. Something tells me it's not quite looking right yet. I don't know what I just made, but it's an abomination. And after this, I quickly made my final home that was the most basic and smallest out of all of these combined. So, uh, let me take you for a little bit of a tour. Starting off, we have, of course, my house. Then we have, of course, my beautiful lookout, even though it's not that tall, but we'll ignore that. Then we have my villager breeding house with tons of beds. Then we have this random house that serves no purpose, but is closely followed up by our enchanting table that I'm proud of, which is also followed up by our mine shaft, which is also followed up by our farmhouse on the outside, which is also followed up by our another random house. This one also serves no purpose, but I like it. It looks nice, and I think this has definitely come a long way. Day 73, I started off with grabbing all of my sugarcane and making as much paper as I could. I wanted to make rockets before I went to battle the end and all that, and I have a decent start. Since I spent pretty much the last 10 days building, I wanted to get a ton of wool so I could make tons of beds. And exactly 24, if you're wondering. And I don't know why, but it's just now occurring to me that I should have made a sheep farm. So that's exactly what I did. I quickly ran home and started digging a hole, just like I did with my cows, but then I realized, hey, uh, sheep kinda, kinda, they kinda need grass, and I just have dirt right here. That might need to be fixed. So I crafted up a bunch of different fences and began walling off this area for the sheep. After convincing them for a solid minute that they're not gonna die if they step outside of the line, they came out and I started breeding them a lot, and then I went to bed. Since I still had some extra fences, I decided that now would be a good time to get my cows out of this hole. I don't know why I trapped them here to begin with, but I'm learning from my mistakes. After spending a considerable amount of time with these sheep, I decided that it was finally time to craft myself up a bunch of beds, and oh boy, my inventory is completely full. Now that I had exactly 24 beds, I just went house to house, placing down all of them, and then immediately, I decided to let my villagers finally go free. They have yearned for this moment for so long, and I'm I'm honestly proud to provide. And immediately, they went straight to breeding. I swear, they wasted no time. With all of these beds here, I was looking to have like a stack of villagers running around. And I'm all for it. Now that everything is free, kind of like that subscribe button that you could press down below, I decided to move all of my items from down in that creepy basement to into my house. Don't know how I haven't done this yet, but I spent a long time doing this. And the reason this took so long is because I was being as organized as I could. Every single chest had a purpose, and every single chest was going to be followed by that purpose. While going through all the random junk that I have, I found two bells, so I put them underneath my house, and wow, these villagers seem to be a little tense. I don't know why. I'm proud to say that after a couple days of progress, I have completely organized every single chest, and I even clogged up that nasty little hole that I used to go through every time, so now, there's just a straight ladder going all the way down and all the way up. Now I wanted to shift my focus to my armor because it's starting to get a little broken and it's not really enchanted. So to save myself a little XP in the future, I decided to combine all these books together. So now I got protection for and mending books. After a full night's rest, I wanted to time myself and see just how fast I could chop down this forest. And I'm proud to note that after an entire day, I finished all of it. Yeah, this new pickaxe that I have is really, really good and I love it. So after this, I decided to craft that all into sticks and planks. And you know what? I like getting 42 emeralds, but at the same time, I think it's time to go to the nether. I'm sick of not having broken trades. I need them, so let's go. Or at least that's what I would say if I had decent armor, so uh... 
So our top priority right now is to get emeralds because I need a lot of emeralds to make sure everything's perfect and I'm able to, you know, max out my armor pretty quickly. Along with selling sticks, I also started selling some paper because I have stacks and stacks of sugarcane. I then added these books to my helmet and my chest plate, and unfortunately, I am out of levels, so I can't really do much more. I tried a few different methods of getting XP, such as killing animals and such, but then it dawned on me. What if I tried doing a raid? This would give me a totem, and I'd feel pretty safe and protected. So, I started killing some of these illagers, or whatever the heck you call them. And unfortunately, I... Uh, I don't know. It just There was a lightning storm, I was a little spooked, lightning kept trying to like kill me and smite me like earlier. So, by the end of the night, I just decided to return back home, and that's when I decided to go to the nether. After a nice nap, day 79, I jumped into the portal, expecting and preparing for the worst. I had my enchanted god apple along with 10 normal golden apples to really make sure that this time I don't die. This time to make sure I find the nether fortress, I decided to go off in diagonal directions. I wasn't going to play any games this time and this was my top priority. That is until the skeletons got in the way and had to be dealt with. After digging some very necessary tunnels and running a couple hundred blocks, I was a little shocked. I accidentally found this while entering a cave. Making sure to waste no time, I quickly went off and tried finding a blaze spawner. Found a couple wither skeletons and this one really spooked me, but besides that, nothing really went wrong. Slowly, I was able to collect some more blaze rods. They were taking a while to spawn, but eventually they started spawning a little more often, so I was able to run back home and avoided a, quite a few close calls, I'll be honest, but I made it back home. Although, something was a little off, because last time I checked, my portal wasn't right here. So I broke this obsidian, so my portal broke, and I ran home. Because this was the village I spawned right next to. Once I made it home, I made the mistake of sleeping. You might ask why this is a mistake, but uh, I'll let you know in a minute. Day 83 started off with me making a bunch of golden ingots. Later, I'm going to be turning this all into some golden apples. Once I was done with that, I decided to just go through and organize all of my nether crap that I've gotten. And now we are finally at the time for me to make some potions. After definitely not searching up how to make a weakness potion on Google, I learned how to make it. And then from there, I wanted to create a couple other potions, some regeneration because, you know, it's pretty useful, definitely in PvP situations. And then another thing I wanted is some slow fall. You know what you need for slow fall? Phantom membrane. Yeah, I think, I think you might understand why I shouldn't have slept. So this meant I had to keep myself busy by doing a bunch of other things things. I started off by making some golden apples because I forgot to do this earlier. Then I decided to be smart to make up a couple more lecterns to try and get better enchants. But the issue with this is that none of these villagers wanted to get it. I don't know what villager was getting this lectern, but it wasn't any of these. So into these different houses, no one was getting lecterns. What is going on? Eventually, I got sick of this, so I just started doing farming, because what else is a man supposed to do? And now that I have two giant wheat fields, it takes quite a few minutes to get this all done and sorted with. So, now we're on to day 85. Day 85, I was back in the nether trying to get myself some enderpearls, but for some reason, these guys just didn't want to fight me. You know, I, I get a couple hits in, but then they're they're gone. They just disappear. So then I started collecting a bunch of gold nuggets to make gold ingots. And then I used my, my beautiful war strategies to uh, sick this guy in a hole. Yeah, he's stuck here forever, but he did manage to give me like seven ender pearls. So I guess that's generous of him. I spent a majority of day 86 just continuing to fight these stupid endermen. They wouldn't drop pearls no matter how much I asked and begged them to. So eventually, I just went back to the overworld. When I got back home, I just decided to organize all the random crap I got because what else am I supposed to do? Now that it's morning time, I don't know exactly what to do for today, so I just kind of did some random things like killing animals. And then I noticed that my horse somehow escaped. I didn't even realize this was my horse at first, I was just about to run past, but Oreo, how did you even get out here? After noticing that it was becoming close to being nighttime, I decided to spend a couple emeralds getting some arrows for my bow, and then I, well, I just camped on top of my farmhouse. Really wanted phantom membrane, and tonight was the night. Tonight was most definitely not the night. I went absolutely bonkers trying to get to some stupid phantom membrane. These guys would swoop down and I'd smack them with my sword, miss the second shot so they wouldn't die, and then they'd end up flying up, and then they'd just mock me, screeching at me, and guess what? They'd never swoop back down. You know what happens when phantoms don't swoop back down? They despawn. 
These phantoms kept despawning and I maybe killed like two of them out of the 30 that spawned on top of me tonight. So I had to wait for the next night, which aggravated me. Alrighty, day 88, I am back in the nether, baby. You know, it's more exciting than not killing any phantoms and not getting any phantom membrane. Not killing any endermen and not getting any ender pearls. That's right, I spent a full two days here. I was here until day 90 just trying to get all of my ender pearls and oh boy, I wish I could post all of these clips and everything separate just link them in the description so you can see just how long I spent trying to do these stupid little things look at this enderman I hit him he's gone never see him again look at this guy hit him kill him nope I don't kill him it just it, it drove me insane but finally I got up to however many pearls I needed and then I left the nether after waiting for the night on day 90 I'm proud to say that I actually managed to get some phantom membrane you know, this is a huge accomplishment and I'm so happy. Immediately after getting some phantom membrane, I quickly turned that crap into some slow falling potions. And now I think I have just about everything prepared to go to the end. Psych, just kidding, I'm back in the nether because I still need literally two pearls. You wanna know how long it took me to get these two pearls? 20 minutes! But I'm not gonna count this as another day because heck, I feel like I've skipped too much and just like, it's so repetitive, like I'm sorry, but I'm just giving you guys more footage and more content to work with. So, uh, day 91, yeah, let's, let's get to it. Day 91, I gathered up everything I could possibly need. I bought an enchanted bow off a villager, grabbed all of the potions that I've brewed, grabbed some blaze eyes, some blaze powder, a ton of wood for, you know, I actually thought this was pretty smart. I'm bringing like a stack of wood specifically to make shulker boxes. So I'm like, I'm going to get so geared up. I also have two rocket or two stacks of rockets. I'm very prepared for this fight. And after releasing my extra rocket just to get this whole adventure started, it was time to head out and search for the end. After throwing the first eye of ender and landed towards that village that goes to the villager outpost. So I thought maybe I'd be lucky and it's just right there. But it ended up going further pointing me towards the direction of the ocean. Luckily I did bring a boat so I was prepared for this situation. After traveling for about a couple hundred blocks I found another village. Since I didn't see the stronghold in the water there was only one place this could be. And that was this village or at least I was hoping so. After running up to the well, I threw the Eye of Ender, and it actually ended up going straight down. So this was the spot, or at least I thought it was. I started digging down, and digging down, and digging down, and digging down a little bit more, and eventually I fell into this, like, ravine. And I was a little concerned, but after digging down a little more, I fell straight into the stronghold, and there was actually diamonds. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but luck really turned around during this 100 days now, didn't it? After mining the diamonds, I kind of found out that there was like a hallway behind this, so I ended up following it down a little bit, and I found a library! Now this is actually really good and awesome, because I needed a lot of books, and this will definitely come in handy if you guys decide you want 200 days. After that, I began searching around the corridors for a little bit, until eventually I found the portal room. And I was very happy to see this, because it didn't take too long, and it actually was a decent experience. Now some may say it's weird, I say it's quite normal. Personally, since I've been playing Minecraft over the last few years, I actually never destroy the spawner. I like to keep it just in case I want to do something with silverfish, and I think you should too, because it's actually pretty weird seeing it there. But ignoring that ranting aside, I lit the portal and jumped through. I was so happy, and I was kind of scared at the same time, but luckily I actually had a decent spawn. After doing a bunch of pot, don't take that out of context, I was finally ready to take on the ender dragon, and oh boy was this one of the worst experiences I've ever Ever had. Ignoring my horrible aim aside, this ender dragon was the most hostile ender dragon I think I've ever seen. This thing puts the bedrock wither to shame. This was the most terrifying experience and I had multiple close calls, but eventually I managed to slowly crack down each tower, except for this one that the ender dragon seemed to not want me to get at all. I swear, every time I get close to the top, it would pin me, start doing a bunch of damage, and then I'd fall back down. Yeah, that's one of the only close calls that you're gonna see, but just know that there was a couple of them. But eventually, I broke every tower, and let me tell you, strength pots and an ender dragon, ooh, they mix together well. Look at this homie's health. And after a couple more hits, the dragon was slayed. Since I have mending on every single tool minus the bow, everything got completely healed up. 
and I don't have to worry about durability anymore. But now is the fun part. We get to go to the end cities, or we have to go try and find the end cities, I should say, going through this tiny little portal. After going through the portal, I turned up my render distance to see if I could see any close end cities, and uh, yeah, you see that? You see that? Oh, you don't see it? Give it a second, let it, let it load in. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, no, there's an end city right there, and there's a ship. You know what that means? Free Elytra. Heck yes. After beginning to bridge towards the island it was connected to, I started running out of blocks and I had to use a little bit of my wood. But since I made it to this little island, I was able to grab a couple more stacks of this end stuff, and I managed to make it to the beautiful ship, where I again ran out of blocks and had to use wood. But that's fine because I definitely didn't eat this much wood, especially because I'm not going to be getting a whole lot of shulker boxes. After killing the shulker that was guarding the elytra, it was finally time. I floated over there, popped it out of its little item frame, and put it on. This felt like such an achievement. And I also collected all the items out of the chest, which I actually managed to have some pretty decent stuff. I really like the end, it has nice good loot for my goblin hands. After that, it just gets really repetitive of me killing a bunch of shulkers, praying to get shells, and I eventually made my own little shulker box and put all of my goodies in there. Yeah, you see this? I'm rich. After killing one of the shulkers, their shell actually fell and landed on the ground. So after swooshing down there, I grabbed it. Or at least that's what I would say. Uh... Wait, wait, am I about to die? Wait a minute. Wait, oh no, half a heart. Yeah, for some reason, these guys just kind of sensed that I was too amazing and that I definitely went into PvP situation and they just left me alone. Literally had half a heart right there. Almost ate my god apple. Kind of glad I didn't because it's nice to have it. And yeah, after that, I just flew around trying to get as many shells as I could from these end cities. And finally, I decided to go back home. After returning home day 100 and facing some accidental x-ray, I said goodbye to all of my villagers and my beautiful world. And I guess this is the end. Or is it? If you guys want to see 200 days, 2500 likes, and I promise I'll do it. I thank you all so much for joining me through my adventure. And I hope you enjoyed my movie, and someone just snapchatted me, hopefully it's a girl and I'm not lonely anymore. I'll catch you guys in the next one, adios gamers, and remember, stay basic and be a king. You